We're going to be reloading some 44 Magnum plinking ammo today. Um, we're starting out with some fresh brass. Got a hundred cases here. This is Starline, got from Cabela's. Nice, bright, shiny brass, doesn't need to be tumbled. So, first step in reloading this brass is we're going to run it through a full length sizing die. I have the Lee three die set here, and this is our full length sizing die, the one with the little nut on the top. So, I have this in a quick change collet already. So let's get this in the press and we'll run all these cases through the full length sizer. To set up the full length sizing die for the 44 Magnum, you have your little shell holder here that comes with your die set. Now it's going to go into your press so. And you're going to take your full length sizing die and we're going to run it down just a little bit. And we're going to screw this down until it contacts the shell plate. Okay, so right here it's touching the shell plate, and then we're going to tighten down the nut. And now we're ready to full length resize. So we've got two loading blocks out because we're doing uh, 100 cases. These cases don't need to be lubed since they're going into a carbide die. But, uh, we're just going to full length resize all these brand new cases and then once I get this done we're going to install some primers. Okay, so I just uh, full length resized, 50 cases, and I'm going to bring out my second loading block and start on the last 50. Now I am full length resizing brand new brass because we don't know what has happened to the brass in the time where it came out of the factory and into my garage. Uh, who knows how many times this stuff has been thrown around on store shelves or dropped, stepped on, who knows what's happened to it. So just to make sure all the cases are uniform and we're not going to have any issues later on, they all have to go through the full length resizer. Okay, that was the last round uh, full length resize, so now we're going to put in some primers. Okay, the load that we're using today is 8 grains of Universal with a 240 grain semi wad cutter bullet and just some uh, large pistol primers. I have Magnum primers right now, I don't have any standard primers. I have tested this load with Magnum primers and I can't tell any difference at all between the two. Um, but the recipe does call for standard primers, but if you only have Magnum primers, they can be substituted in this instance. So we're going to take our primers, they come in boxes of 100, and one thing I don't really care for so much with these federal primers is they're all on their sides, and they can be a little difficult to all get on this hand primer. So there's no simple way to do this. Just be kind of quick. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't like these side trays. Uh, CCI and uh, Winchester all have their primers uh, upside down. Fancy. I'm shaking this, uh, the tray. Let's get these straights back on here. So some of these are flipped over, some aren't. You can flip them over by hand, but the little grooves in here are so they'll catch the anvil and flip them over it's just by shaking them. You can see they're all flipping anvil up. You got one stubborn one right here, so let's get him by hand. But yep, anvil is up on here, and then we're gonna take our cover for the hand primer and put that on. Okay. 
there's a little dimple right here in it. It never fails. There's always one little primer stuck under there. So. Come on. There we go. Okay, so we have this channel blocked off and this channel open. And this will go into our hand primer like so. Sometimes a little difficult. Okay, and then we're going to grab our shell holder out of the press. So here's our shell holder from the press. This is going in. And then this step is just like uh, hand priming any other cases. You're just going to take the case and we're going to lift this up. Take the case, slide in the shell holder, shake down a primer, and then gently press it into the case, and it is seated just below flush, and that's perfect. So I'm going to do this on all 100 cases, and then we can move on to our next step. Okay, we got all of our cases primed. Now we can bell out the mouth of the case to accept the bullet. We are going to be adding powder before the bullet, of course, but I like to bell out the mouth of the case before I put powder in, so there's no chance that any powder can get in or out of the case. Uh, so with this Hornady press, you just put in a new quick change die. This is our case mouth opener. Uh, it also has a function where you can pour powder through it, but I don't use that function. So we're going to get our shell holder out of our hand primer and put it back into the press. And we're going to run this down just a bit, move our loading blocks back to this side of the bench and I'm going to grab a case and run it up into the press. Now I'm going to run the die down until we feel it touch the case. So it's touching the case right there. So we can take it out and we'll give it a full rotation. And then tighten down this nut. So now the die is one full rotation lower than when it initially touched the case. So this is going to push the case into the die and it's going to flare the top of the case out. So that's not very much flare. And let's go grab a bullet. So these are the bullets I'm going to be using, just uh, plated lead, nothing fancy. Uh, so let's give this die a three-quarter turn. And it's getting there a little bit. I want a little bit more. You don't want to shave the plating off of the bullet. So let's test this. You just want it open just enough to where the bullet will uh, be able to be seated nicely without shaving a jacket or plating off. So a little bit more. A little bit more. We're getting pretty close. And sometimes the nut will tighten down on you, so you have to loosen it. OK. 
Okay, so that's that's just about there. Give it another half turn and we'll be there. Okay, so you should be able to see that the case mount is a little bit belled out on this one versus this one. Hopefully you guys can see that. And you can see that the bullet starts into the case nicely with this one. It won't shave off the plating of jacketing. Whereas if you don't build the case, it doesn't fit into the case and you're going to shave off your jacket and you're not going to have a good time. So we're going to bell the cases, all 100 of them, and then we'll add powder. So I like to use um, visual confirmation to make sure that I'm done with a certain process and I don't have stray cases that I've missed for some reason. So I forgot to flip all these cases upright so that I could flip them upside down on this step. And this just helps me keep track of uh, what step I'm on. So I like to keep my cases a certain direction on certain parts of the reloading process. And it's mostly so that I can immediately tell whether a case has been charged with powder or not. At this point, it's not as critical as later in the process, but I still like a visual confirmation that each case has been cycled through the process and uh, a face up case will have a different uh, point in the process and different meaning than a case that's upside down. So at this point a case that's upside down has been built and is ready for powder whereas a case that is upright hasn't been built yet. So we're gonna run these all through the expander die and these will have the bullets seat very nicely in them. So let's get all hundred of these belled. Okay, we got our first 50 expanded and I'm going to move on to the second 50. I like to do only one process at a time so that there's no chance of making a mistake. Uh, this is a powder through expanding die, meaning that you could stick a funnel like this up in the die and uh, measure out a measure of powder and then dump it right in the case while it's still in the die. But that's adding a second step to the process. And that's a, a point where an error could be made. So I like to do one step at a time, be methodical. It takes a little bit longer, but it's, in my opinion, it's a little safer. It's uh, one of the reasons why I, I only load with a single stage press because I don't trust the uh, progressive presses to be accurate enough or uh, methodical in the process enough. Uh, I want to see every case as it goes through the process and make sure that it's perfect at every step. Okay, we got all of the case necks expanded and they will fit this bullet now without shaving off the jacket and now we can add our powder charge. Okay, we're back on the other side of our bench now with our cases. Uh, the powder that we're going to be using today is universal. Uh, this is different than universal clays, which uh, is easily confused by people who don't know what they're looking for. Uh, this is just plain universal. Uh, it's a very different powder than universal clays and the uh, powder charges are not interchangeable. So uh, this is the powder that I'm using. There's lots of different powders that will work with 44 Magnum. Almost any of the uh, pistol primers can make 
uh, light blinking loads like uh, unique is a good one or tight group but uh, anytime you're using one of these powders that doesn't fill up the case very much it's just very very important that you keep track of where you are in the loading process and keep track of which cases had been loaded because it's very easy to do a double charge if you're not paying attention. So let's uh, take our universal, get it in the powder hopper, and get the hopper dispensing the correct weight. Another thing that's nice about using universal or something like tight group is that it, you just need a very small charge uh, for each load and so a pound of powder goes really really far when you're reloading so it's just a, another way to keep uh, costs down. So this is what Universal looks like it's a flat flake powder it's kind of a light tannish brown um, so we're running our plunger down here so it's throwing the correct amount. Okay. Let's see. Okay, we have our little scoop zeroed. We'll dispense a little powder and it's throwing 12 and a half grains, which is too much. So we'll run our plunger in, get a few out, and equalize everything. Okay, that's at 9.4, and just a little bit more. Let's get a few out. That is a 7.0, so a little bit out. So that is at 8.1. Let's take one more. That is 8.0. 8.1 and 8.1, 8.2. So we're going to bring in just a hair and we should be at the charge that we want. There's a margin of error with these digital scales. And the other thing is with this load, uh, we're dealing with a safe charge range. We have universal here starting as six and a half going up to 10.2. So eights right in the middle there, uh, 0.1 grains in either direction isn't going to hurt this load. Let's get this zeroed one more time. Make sure we're still throwing the same amount, and the load has lightened up just a hair, so we're going to bring it out just a hair. Okay, good. So we got it throwing exactly eight grains, and we're going to charge all these cases. So my method to make sure that I don't double charge cases is that a case that is facing down and it has a primer has not been charged and it's obvious that it hasn't been charged because if it had 
the powder would have dumped out. And a case that is facing up in this step has been charged, and it's very easy to look down into the case and see the powder visibly. And I'm dropping the charge directly into the case from the hopper. And of course, uh, you could have used uh, once fired or multiple time fired brass for this. Um, I'm just using new brass on this one so I can expand my current stock of 44 Magnum. Uh, I already have older cases loaded up with this, but just want some more available. So at various points along the process, we're going to make sure that the hopper is still throwing the correct charge. So I've just done 10. So we have our scale zeroed. We got to drop a charge. And yep, we're still at exactly eight grains. So we're good to go and we will keep charging cases. Now, even though we're doing the right side up, upside down case method, you could still grab a right side up case by mistake. So the whole point in the reloading process, you have to be alert and knowing what you're doing, not being distracted by things. That's why I don't have a radio going, don't have any earphones, listening to iPod or something. Uh, reloading is the only thing I'm doing right now. Well, besides talking to you guys. Okay, we have our first 50 cases charged. And at this point we can visually inspect them. And I'm just doing a quick glance, making sure they're all at the same level. Um, it's usually pretty easy to spot a double charged case, uh, so I'm going to make a double charged case on purpose and just make sure to keep a really good eye on this so this doesn't get mixed in. And this, with this powder, it is pretty obvious when you spot a double charged case. This is going to be pretty difficult to show you, but you can see this one is double charged, this one is single charged. So it does fill up quite a bit, and you have to be pretty careless not to notice that. But, yeah, double charge case, back in the hopper, we don't want that. So, yep, yeah, just making sure these are all same level, which they are, and then this block will get moved to the complete other side of the bench, so we don't have to deal with it anymore. And upside down, now we can focus on our second block. At this point we're going to make sure that our uh, powder hopper is still throwing the correct charge amount. And so we're going to get charge and yep, it is still throwing exactly 8.0 grains which is what we want for this load and we will continue charging cases. Okay, we've done 30 here. Just as a redundancy, a safety precaution, uh, we're going to check our charge again, make sure it's still throwing eight grains, which it is. We're good to go. And we're gonna finish up these last 20. We got our second block of 50 cases charged. I'm just doing a quick visual inspection so we don't have any double charge cases. With I'm sure we don't because I've been very careful. So we're going to put this block over on the other side of the bench and we're going to move on to probably the trickiest part of loading this round. Now this is going to be the tricky part of the whole process. So we're going to take our 
quick change, call it out, put a new one in. Really easy with the horn depressed to do this. And we're going to start in our die. Okay, so the bullets that we're going to be using for this load are 240 grain uh, plated semi wad cutter lead bullets. Uh, these are Rainier plated bullets. I got these from Cabela's in the Bargain Cave. They were $63.44 for a box of 500. So about 12 cents per projectile. 12, 12 and a half cents per projectile. So very cheap for plinking ammo compared to a XTP or other soft point. Uh, you can cut that cost down by casting bolts yourself, but that's just going to take more time. You're going to have to uh, melt the lead, cast your bolts, and lube them and size them. And it, in my opinion, it's easier just to buy the plated bullets, especially when they're on sale like this. So what's tricky about this is that the Lee die, the Lee bullet seam die here in the three die set, it does two processes at the same time, which makes it a little bit more difficult to set up than a simple bullet seating die or a simple crimping die. Uh, it's going to seat the bullet and remove the bell of the case and crimp it down at the same time. And it can be a little tedious to get set up and a little bit annoying, but we're going to deal with it. So we're going to run down our die like we did before with the expander die until it touches. Okay, so that is where we want it. And then we want our plunger all the way out, or a good ways out. And we're going to take this down in incremental steps so that we don't seat any bullets too far and we don't crimp the case before we want it crimped. I'm going to retrieve a bullet, get it placed in the case, it's upright, and run it into the die. And that didn't see it all, so we're going to run down our plunger just a bit. And felt that, that started to seat. Now that seated a bit, but it's not as far as we need to go. So at this point we can get our calipers out and the overall length that we're going for on these is uh, 1.610 inches and this guy's I'm sure he's too long yeah we're at uh, 1.75 so we're gonna have to go down a ways so we're just gonna take this down a little bit more Uh, 1.68, a little bit more, and what we're going to try to do is get pretty close to 1.610, but just a little bit longer, and then the last adjustment that we're going to make is turning down the actual die rather than the plunger and the turning of the die will be just enough to crimp the case down. So we're at uh, 1.66. Give it just a little bit more. Okay, so now we're at uh, 1.62. So at this point, we're going to leave this plunger alone, and we're going to turn our actual die down just a little bit. And since we had this stopped at the top of the case before, turning it down further will uh, compress the top of the case down and crimp it. Fill 
let it give a little more resistance, which is what we wanted. You can see the bell of the case has been removed. We're going to check our length. And we are at exactly 1.610, which is just where we wanted. And the bell has been removed. At this point, this cartridge is uh, ready to shoot. So it's going to go into our plastic cartridge box. See our bullet to get straight. Run it up into the die. And it's taken off the bell of the case. And we are at 1.610. And that's good to go. So let's seat bullets into the rest of our brass. and even all the way around and we don't want too much of a crimp because it'll dig into the jacket or the plating uh, just enough to where it takes off the bell and it'll give reliable feeding into our revolver cylinder First 10 seated, just make sure we're good. Yep, 1.610, we're still good. So we can keep on going. Well, the battery died, but I finished loading these anyway. And now we're partially charged, so we have just enough battery to finish out this video. But here's our 100 rounds all loaded, and uh, these have all had the bullets seated and crimped. And they're in our plastic reloading box. And the most important part of this whole process is labeling them so that we actually know what they are. Um, I have the gun that I'm going to be shooting them out of. The cartridge overall length, the caliber, the bullet that I'm using, the powder that's used, the weight of the powder, the primer, and the brass. Now, any reloader that looks at this will be able to look at these loads and confirm this data by pulling them apart. And even if these sit for 20 years, this data is still going to be around and labeled on here. And I'm going to know what these things are what they're loaded with, and everything is good. So now I want to show just how much money we are saving by reloading. Now a lot of people are going to tell you that you can't save money by reloading. Well, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, so look at these stats that I've drawn up. Factory 44 Magnum is about $32 per box of 50. That's 64 cents a round. This is the first loading with brand new cases. Our cases cost 25 cents a piece. Our primers were 3 cents a piece. Our powder was 3 cents per charge. Our projectile was 13 cents, which is 44 cents per round. So this box of ammo was 44 cents a round versus 64 cents a round for factory ammo. That's the same power class. So that means I'm saving 20 cents a round even if I threw away these cases after I fired them once. Uh, on our second loading, and up to probably 10 or 15 loadings out of these cases, all we have to pay for is the primer, powder, and projectile. And that's 19 cents a round. That's the same price as steel case 9mm. So this just really goes to show that if you do get into reloading, you can save a lot of money. 
there are some rounds that uh, will simply just take way too long to make your money back by reloading them, so there's no point in reloading them. But big bore cartridges like this, you can save a ton of money by reloading, and rather than this being a, a high-powered shoot-once-a-year gun, this is a moderate recoiling accurate gun that anybody can shoot and it's cheap same price as 9mm and it's a heck of a lot of fun hopefully you got something out of this reloading video it's not a very difficult process if you need any clarification on any of the steps just leave that in the comment section below i want to thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe to see more good reloading and shooting videos thanks All these factors must be considered as we plan for the survival of our homes, our families, and our nation in the nuclear age.